Okay, hello. Hello. Uh, we, we wanted to test uh, six uh, motherboards with uh, the major BSDs and Torboot because uh, Torboot doesn't uh, work well with uh, some boards. Uh, there are some problems e and uh, we would like to talk about them. So. Okay. Uh, people think that uh, Corbot may work only with uh, the Linux systems, but we are the fans of uh, BSD systems, so that's why we had to check it. And this computer is not ours. We, don't <laughs> 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 we, we run uh, BSD, and it's here. Okay, something about us, as I said before, uh, we are fans of free and open source uh, software and hardware solution, and we want to uh, integrate it with uh, BSD systems. And oh. okay, and when we buy a new device, we uh, check if it uh, if it's gonna work with a core boot, and that's the. Um, uh, main criteria for us. Okay. Uh, privately, I'm a sysadmin at the data center. Uh, I usually manage Linux systems, some BSD, and... And I uh, work uh, for the company that provides the uh, IT support for other companies and uh, desktop as a service stuff. Uh, and I'm also a maintainer of some FreeBSD pods. Okay. So about Torboot. Uh, for those who don't know, uh, it's a free, uh, com completely open alternative to BIOS or UEFI. Uh, it can work on uh, x86, it can work on ARM, uh, does, there were so there were some efforts uh, to port for power. Uh, for some motherboards, it can work uh, without any blocks. Uh, for example, this X100. Uh, it boots faster than uh, BIOS. Uh, it uh, initializes memory pa uh, in parallel. Uh, you can also put memtest uh, that you can usually boot uh, with USB. Uh, you can put it to the BIOS ROM, BIOS chip. So it's more convenient this way. Okay. So uh, open source is not so easy as <laughs> it uh, may seem. So there is always something wrong that can happen. And if it can happen, it happens. So some uh, disadvantages of core boot. Uh, it's uh, mostly the uh, temperature uh, issues. Uh, core boot uh, doesn't control uh, the fans. And uh, the uh, thermal issues were uh, the most uh, hardcore things we uh, had to manage. Oh, please don't do it. <laughs> and as I said before, uh, booting system, uh, systems that are not uh, Linux, uh, it's not so obvious. Uh, yes, usually only Linux is uh, well tested sometimes even Windows, uh, but BSD, well, it's quite a marginal use case for Cloud Boot. Uh, that may be a problem. I mailed with some developers, they didn't even uh, run any BSD on any board, so that's a problem. Okay, uh, we tested those motherboards. Uh, I guess some of them are well known, some may not be well known. Uh, we tested uh, this with external GPU because I have a CPU with, uh, without any 
integrated uh, GPU. So that was needed. And it was uh, not always successful, and you will know why. Okay, uh, the problems are that uh, mainly FreeBSD doesn't support controlling fans. It's a great issue. Uh, usually, uh, the fans either run at 100% or they run at whatever codeboot uh, has initialized them. Sometimes it's 20%, for example. Uh, if you run some, some very high load, uh, the computer may shut down. Uh, it's a really great problem. OpenBSD, on the other regard, uh, is really great. It supports uh, actually everything. NetBSD is also not bad. Uh, it's a little worse but than OpenBSD, but also not bad. Uh, interestingly, uh, there was some GSORT work uh, 10 years ago uh, by some student. Uh, to port the OpenBSD hardware sensor framework to uh, FreeBSD. It was even committed, uh, but a day later uh, it was reverted <laughs> uh, due to a complaint from uh, PHT. So Paul Henning Camp didn't like it. Um, and then there was no alternative, alternative uh, at all. There's also an issue of higher TDP. The CPUs uh, give more temperature. temperature. Uh, you need usually additional cooling. Okay. Uh, this is the first board. It's uh, our router, uh, which was the, the less uh, problems. Uh, it's, it didn't have any problems because the vendor actually cared about uh, the users. Uh, Coreboot is installed out of the box. Uh, actu it actually doesn't have any proprietary uh, UEFI or BIOS. Uh, and it just works usually. Uh, there were some problems running NetBSD. Uh, because it doesn't support XHCI, uh, so uh, you can't install uh, from USB because uh, it only has USB 3. Uh, but NetBSD 8 uh, has uh, new drivers and it works. Uh, it's also nice that PC Engines uh, sells uh, recovery boards, so you don't have to hardware flash. Uh, when you make a bad code boot ROM and uh, it doesn't boot. And this computer we, you can see here. It was the first one we uh, flashed uh, by hardware. And it's, uh, it works pretty good. Uh, uh, it even can uh, works as uh, the main PC at home uh, when one of uh, the desktops uh, was broken. And the uh, uh, only uh, issue with that is that we, uh, we can't uh, suspend and uh, resume uh, so freely. Well, yeah. we can suspend and resume. And it works, but uh, it's hard to say. Uh, some hours after resuming, uh, a random time, it just freezes. I can suspend and resume just fine many times or just one time. Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, then, um, when doing some work, I can do anything. Uh, it just freezes. Uh, I can't uh, turn it off with the button. Uh, I need to hold it, so I need to do it hard. Uh, there's always FSCK problem later. And it, of course, overheats. Uh, with a BSD. And 
this is uh, us doing the hardware flashing. Uh, I have to say that uh, uh, using the big, uh, no, no big one, I mean the uh, power supply, uh, I strongly recommend uh, to make uh, the small, small, pretty one uh, uh, power supply uh, for three volts and not using the big one from the... Yes, uh, this is ATX power supply, actually. Yes, it, it, it was big and and it... Uh, uh, there was some uh, distractions in the signal of the uh, big bone. From the bone itself. Yes, right. and uh, the uh, wires must be really short and uh, those Yes, those uh, are way too long. Uh, we had to shorten them uh, later and isolate them from uh, any uh, distraction from the from the outside. And uh, the clip is the Pomona, uh, which is much better than the cheap Chinese uh, ones, even if it's uh, more expensive. So. Uh, Seems like Pomona keeps, it will yeah. save you some trouble and more work. Yes, uh, we will show later how how the uh, cheap Chinese clips uh, look and why they are uh, not so good. And if you want to see us uh, doing uh, the flashing, uh, you can uh, watch the videos on uh, YouTube. Uh, the, the movies are on Koci uh, Świata SD channel, uh, and it's uh, it's about uh, Libre Libre and I uh, think that uh, uh, X two hundred flashing. There are some funny moments. And uh, the next board. Okay, so, um, this board is quite interesting. Uh, it can manage uh, the fan at the CPU uh, with the south bridge. So it actually uh, runs FreeBSD quite nice. Uh, it can manage uh, the chassis fans, which are also, the connectors are there. Uh, they usually just stand up at 100% with FreeBSD. Uh, but it works, uh, and it's not even that loud <laughs> uh, with my case. Uh, FreeBSD also works great. Uh, it works actually out of the box. Uh, I don't have to s set up any anything, uh, I just install it. Uh, NetBSD, well, <laughs> uh, I can install from the USB uh, just fine. It works, but when I reboot, and I want to uh, put some HDD. Well, it doesn't work. It wo loads another payload from the CBOS list, for example, MemTest or anything else. Uh, the next one on the list. So, um, yes, the installation works, boots fine, uh, but there are some problems with booting from HDD, I, mean, I guess. Uh, and this is our server. Uh, yes, this was actually the most interesting case uh, here. And, uh, uh, as we said before, the uh, most uh, problematic issue is with the uh, thermal control on the board. And it's uh, a well-known fact but mostly on the Linux systems. And uh, we noticed that uh, on BSD systems, it's even more problematic. And we, when we installed the uh, call boot, uh, we couldn't use the server at all because it used to uh, turn off because of uh, overheating. It was overheating, it 
about 10 to 12, uh, 20. 20 minutes. And uh, the CPUs were re really hot. It, they were about 90 degrees. Uh, in Linux, they were about 50 degrees. So that's the difference. <laughs> uh, and we only had some uh, heat, uh, heaters. Uh, no, not me. Uh, radiator, uh, <laughs> not heaters. Uh, we didn't have any fans. Uh, we had fans uh, in the trays only. And that was a problem. We had to uh, add uh, fans to the CPUs. Uh, after that, uh, the temperatures uh, lowered. They are now okay. Uh, ab about uh, 30, 40 degrees. That's nice. Uh, but uh, I use FreeBSD on it. Uh, Torboot sets uh, fans to 100% and it doesn't lower. So uh, I needed another solution to uh, control the fans. Uh, because uh, they run at constant rate. Another issue is that um, after I worked out the cooling, uh, when the server started doing anything somewhat, it didn't overheat, uh, but it ran unstable. Uh, there were no kernel panics, but uh, it just rebooted. Uh, so about 10, 20, 30 minutes, and it reboots. Uh, when doing some compilation, um, anything. When it does nothing, just runs idle, there's no problem. Uh, Timothy Pearson from Raptor, who ported Torboot uh, to this board, suggested uh, turning off C states in CMOD. Uh, that actually helped. Uh, it runs now very stable. I can reach an uptime. <laughs> uh, and it works nice, I guess. It's uh, usable, usable for everyday using. Okay, uh, so uh, about the fans. Uh, there are some recent developments by uh, Raptor and Timothy Pearson. Uh, he ported the OpenBMC stack uh, by Facebook. Uh, they use it to control the fans. Uh, and it's now possible to flash the uh, BMC chip uh, with OpenBMC. That makes a uh, completely open solution for running a system. Unfortunately, OpenBMC uses Linux under, uh, uh, on the background, but, uh, well, it works. And uh, about uh, other systems, well, uh, OpenBSD runs uh, nice. Uh, there are no problems. I didn't test it after OpenBMC uh, flashing, but uh, it can control the fans just uh, just fine. Uh, NetBSD, uh, I couldn't test it because uh, uh, lack of time. So um, I actually don't know, uh, but uh, those two work just fine. This is our cooling. Uh, at first, we tried the cat because cats <laughs> like to uh, go uh, well this uh, high temperature, but uh, the cat wasn't enough. And the radiators, even if they are copper, they uh, wasn't weren't enough. So uh, we tried to use uh, some active cooling. Uh, from uh, Dynatron, and uh, I was wondering if the uh, aluminum heaters uh, can uh, work w as well as uh, copper ones, but uh, they do. Uh, yeah, those are A8 and A13 uh, uh, models. Uh, this one is for 1U, uh, and this one is 
for few because uh, there's an HDD backplane just above the, the, the CPU. Uh, okay, uh, that that was actually my desktop board that burned, and I use this X two hundred because of it. Uh, I flashed core boot uh, on it. Uh, it's quite a nice board, but uh, hmm, there are some open uh, FreeBSD problems. Mm. Okay, uh, OpenBSD works fine, uh, uh, no problem at all, other than uh, the GPU which was uh, from NVIDIA, so no drivers, uh, well, no issue. Uh, about FreeBSD, uh, the same problem with cooling. Uh, when doing some work, some compilation, I was playing some game on Wine, for example, uh, it just shuts down, the CPU is very hot. Uh, well, that's a problem. Another issue, uh, after booting the system, there are some messages in the console, uh, actually during booting. Uh, after some messages about PCI, uh, the steering doesn't update anymore. It just uh, um, displays the old lines but the system boots fine. Uh, I can uh, use it uh, via serial. I can also set uh, X11 to, work, uh, to load automatically or I can load it via SSH or serial and it loads. It works fine. There's the desktop, everything, but you can't uh, uh, get to the TTY. Uh, it was, uh, there was a similar issue with uh, Intel drivers at, uh, 9.1 version and later, when you couldn't uh, get to the TTY after the X11 started. So that's similar. Uh, about NetBSD, mm, well, I was told by um, the NetBSD developer that Nuvu is still quite unstable, so I guess it can show here. Um, when starting X11 at uh, with NetBSD 7, uh, the system just hangs up, but the console works uh, before starting. After starting, it doesn't. Uh, with NetBSD 8, uh, Nuvu is enabled by default, so uh, it just hangs, and there's no output at all, serial or uh, video. Okay. Uh this is the next uh, thing that we tried to flash uh, from the hardware. And this is uh, this uh, Chinese chip cl clip. Uh, we tried to save some money and uh, we didn't buy full mono clip. Uh, and then we have some problems uh, because uh, those clips uh, have a very narrow pins, so uh, you have to bend them uh, on the side and then uh, it's not so easy just to clip the gold pins, it's, uh, <coughs> it's uh, uh, duct tape, it's not uh, the, the clip. I had to cut them and uh, solder them directly uh, to the chip. To, to the clip and uh, the clip itself, it uh, it uh, wears out very quickly. So you need to buy few uh, because when you try to clip uh, it right to the chip, uh, it uh, may be a problem because they slip. Uh, off and uh, the soldering wasn't enough because uh, we couldn't uh, get the uh, right uh, uh, image from the, the chip. Uh, so uh, then we 
asked some people on the his channel and it ended like that. So the boat just fried and there was a uh, smoke and the smell and so on. <laughs> and then we bricked the uh, laptop with pretty good parameters. Okay, so as I said before, uh, after some uh, experiences with the uh, big uh, power supply, I made the small one with uh, goat pins uh, and it uh, worked pretty well. Uh, but when we tried to get a prop, uh, get a ROM uh, image, uh, we couldn't uh, get it. And my advice uh, just uh, make a big loop for uh, 50 or 100 uh, trials. And uh, some guys on the channel suggested, to suggested uh, using the Lenovo power supply uh, inside. And uh, it was a bad idea, so don't trust the random guys because they give you advice and, they, and then they disappear. The idea <laughs> was that uh, if you enable wait on LAN in the UFE uh, and connect the PSU without the battery on, uh, the laptop is actually on even, uh, to if, even if you turn it off and you can get the ROM image. But it, uh, well, it didn't work. It worked to, uh, with our own PSU it didn't work with uh, Lenovo PSU. Yeah, so it's uh, way much safer to make your own uh, PCU and don't trust uh, the guys from the internet. And uh, if you are lucky and your laptop is still on the warranty, you can sell it back to the seller and say to them, oh, I don't know what has happened. <laughs> it, it doesn't boot. I don't know why, please help me. Uh, and they, they replaced the main board and uh, I have a fresh new uh, ThinkPad, but I am afraid to repeat the actions because I think they, they wouldn't believe me twice. <laughs> okay, and some uh, alternatives to uh, code boot because it's not the only uh, one uh, solution. Uh, yes, there are other uh, completely open solutions, uh, mainly open hardware solutions. Uh, there are some Novena boards. Uh, they make some uh, really nice development boards. Uh, they are based on the ARM, so I guess uh, it could be ported to FreeBSD or other BSDs. Uh, there's also to this Omnia, uh, a Czech uh, ARM router uh, with eight gigabyte flash. So actually any uh, BSD would fit in without uh, any slimming. Uh, and uh, actually about x86, uh, there are no more open uh, x86 boards. Intel makes uh, management, uh, CPUs with management engine enforced and AMD enforces uh, PSP. So that's a big problem. Uh, there's also uh, a board from the guys who ported uh, CoreBoot to uh, the D16 boards, uh, uh, Talos 2. Uh, it works with uh, IBM Power9 CPUs. Uh, there are two, at, at least two, uh, FreeBSD developers buying this board. Uh, they want to port uh, FreeBSD on it. Uh, it can make a really powerful workstation, a server, actually everything. Uh, you can see the spec here. Uh, the guys sell it right now, and uh, I guess uh, it's actually the only open solution right now uh, that is uh, modern. Uh, it's 
it's actually in pre-order right now. And uh, mm, it works with uh, Linux. You can port uh, FreeBSD on it. Uh, jo just inhibits uh, from FreeBSD and uh, and some other <laughs> developer uh, bundles bots. Okay, and uh, it's a pretty good example because it's uh, one of those uh, free and open uh, devices that are not uh, updated. And so uh, can you can uh, show it to the other people and they won't laugh at you if you have <laughs> old computer uh, and you, uh, you can uh, use it uh, for scientific uh, purposes for enter <coughs> enterprise uh, purposes and uh, other stuff that uh, needs uh, a big uh, uh, that means just a, a big uh, power it's a big uh, powerful substation Uh, so, any questions uh, to have? Hmm? Hmm? Um, I was about to flash my X to, to uh, 230, oh. uh, <laughs> mainly because of Intel ME. Right. Uh, do you know if it solves completely the, the issue of Intel ME? Uh, no, it doesn't solve. It can solve it uh, partially. <coughs> uh, there's an utility, ME Cleaner. Uh, it, it can strip down the ME. Uh, it leaves the most uh, necessary partitions that are necessary to boot. Uh, the others are stripped down. So you can Slip it from, I don't know, maybe five megabytes to actually 100 kilobytes. Uh, that's quite nice, I guess. Uh, and some guys at uh, Librem, they make Purism laptops, uh, work on uh, completely reverse engineering the ME. Okay. And uh, another question, what's the difference between Corebot and Librebot? Okay, uh, Libreboot tries to avoid any blobs. Uh, any blobs meaning uh, even microcode updates. Mm, for me, uh, that's an issue. I prefer to have microcode updates. I need to have uh, microcode anyway, so if I can get it updated, I do it. So, I started with Libreboot actually, but uh, it's pretty pointless for me because I don't even have hardware virtualization on my laptop and I can have it uh, if I just update the microcode. So that's it. You mean C CPU microcode? Yes. Uh, on the D16 server we showed, uh, there's an even uh, vulnera uh, vulnerability with uh, uh, some CPUs if you don't uh, update the microcode and Libreboot doesn't so that's a big problem please speak like this uh, just to make sure that it's actually recorded <laughs> um, so what is your opinion of uh, U-Boot in comparison to Core Boot Okay, uh, because it's yeah. not just an ARM. There is a bunch of Intel uh, engineers working on on x86 compatibility. Uh, U-Boot is quite nice, but it uh, doesn't work on x86. Uh, yes, uh, there are Raspberry Pis, uh, BeagleBones. They work with U-Boot. Uh, it's actually nice. I guess. So in the the most recent version. Uh, the one released earlier this month, there is quite a bit of code from Intel for the um, the, the the i5 and i7 modern modern CPUs as well. 
Uh, it may require special motherboards, but it, it should support at least the the um, like the, the the Broadwell and Haswell and all that stuff. Okay, uh, you boot. I guess uh, it may be an alternative to core boot, uh, and it may work. Uh, I'm not sure. I didn't try it, but it still. Uh, I'm pretty sure it still needs management engine or PSP if you use it on AMD boards. So that's an alternative to core boot, but uh, it doesn't free. It's not free anymore than core boot. Yeah. Just as a data point, I have a Purism Librem uh, laptop, which mm -hmm. is uh, with core boot, and it's uh, working quite well on uh, OpenBSD. The only problem is that uh, th there is no support for the frequency scaling of the CPU because the ICPI tables are missing from core boot uh, to give the information to, uh, to the OpenBSD kernel. So I'm trying to push the Purism people to add this uh, this table back to the to the core firmware. I'm not sure if it's going to uh, to work. Uh, if they're going to listen to me or not, because of course under Linux they are using their own uh, Intel Pay State drivers to mm. scale the f the CPU frequency, and they don't need the ICPI table. But I don't think anyone on OpenBSD is going to implement uh, this kind of uh, drivers. The background for that is that Intel stopped providing the necessary uh, data points uh, for the frequency uh, the frequency voltage table for the CPU uh, quite a long time ago. So um, Core Boot would have to, as a reverse engineer them uh, from uh, the existing uh, ROM images or try to figure them out on their own. So it's quite tricky. <laughs> Uh, do you know the current state of more modern AMD systems like the Zen architecture, if there is any issues like on Intel with management firmware or so? Yes, actually there are issues just like with uh, management engine. Uh, there's the ma mentioned PSP blob, which is, I guess, a platform security processor. Uh, and ju it just, well, it's another backdoor just like management, Probably a vector, not proven actually. Uh, just like management engine. Uh, actually, the last uh, usable boards are from 2013, 2012. Uh, with those, uh, this Asus uh, KGPE D16 is uh, quite nice. Uh, you can have uh, 190. To gigabytes RAM, 32 cores. So you can buy this, this one, I guess. So, do you have any idea why the power usage is so much, or like the heat dissipation is higher, but why is the power usage so much higher in FreeBSD? Uh, can you speak a little louder? Okay, do you have any idea why the power usage is so much higher if you're running FreeBSD? Did mm. you read anything why that happens? Uh, I actually don't know. Um, and it's not FreeBSD. Uh, other BSDs are also down uh, hotter, but they can support controlling fans. So they, they can make uh, fans go faster and that was that uh, was around the problem uh, with FreeBSD. Hmm, I'm not sure. That's a problem to solve for developers. I'm not a de FreeBSD developer. I'm not sure. If you depend on your operating system for uh, for fan control, what happens if if you get a kernel panic? Because at least in FreeBSD, if you have a kernel panic, then uh, then one CPU goes into uh, a spin loop and it gets uh, quite hot. Uh, yes, but I didn't have any kernel panics. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, actually, it's well, they were, but when it works, uh, 
when I don't do any crazy stuff, it works. So there are no killing pangs right now. <laughs> uh, I had the C states problem, but it just rebooted. There were no there, there were no panics. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, that's why why I think the idea of uh, core boot or BIOS going into system management mode every once in a while to fix the to configure the fence is uh, quite reasonable. For your server board, did you have any uh, particular difference? The picture showing the open chassis. Um, did you me measure? Did it? Did it also crash when you put the cover on with the regular cu cooling, which? Did crash previously with, without your modification with a larger cooler. Um, can you repeat louder? Um, in louder? most cases, server vendors tell you you have to put the cover on. Like uh, it has to be at most uh, like ten minutes without the cover, otherwise it will overheat anyway. Okay. So I would be interested in knowing if it didn't crash when you had the yes, cover on. With well, the, the cover. I did test with cover off and cover on. Uh, it uh, was hot anyway, so no, that's not a problem. <laughs> uh, if you can, if you want some details, uh, I was uh, informed that there was, there are some problems with Intel network drivers and FreeBSD, and that's why it rebooted. Um, when their systems were on, I mean. <laughs> 